Awesome. Hey, Becky. Hello. Are you in states now, or you're in UK? Uh, no, I flew back to London on Tuesday, so I'm in the UK right now. Okay, good. So, so me. I don't normally wake up not this productive. <laughs> well, me either. But the great thing with the avatar is definitely that um, you can be comp like full pajama and yeah. super messy hair. <laughs> Arnold at the blue <clears throat> table is just making fun of me for that. Great! Ah, uh, looks like we have almost full house. We have lots of people. Good morning, everybody. Um, feel free to say hi. You're joining us in the chat. Um, we are gonna kickstart the the event. And hopefully we will have a little bit more people joining. A uh, little bit, just a little bit, uh, help you to navigate the space. So when when you can like, when we are talking on the stage, everybody can hear us. But if you're sitting in the table, then only the people who sit uh, together with you in the same table can can hear you. And you can teleport yourself around. Uh, if you move your mouse to other table on the seat, you will see these green uh, bubbles coming up. And if you click, and then you can basically then you can teleport yourself. And if you click room, you can see other people's profile. If you click on their name, you can follow them. You can also connect with them, uh, for example, on their LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever. So feel free to connect with everybody. After our talk, we are gonna leave the room for uh, everybody to have networking so you can teleport yourself around the table and meet each other. Well done, Vicky. Normally that's my job to do that. Oh, uh, well, because you said since you already woke up so early, so I thought that I'll <laughs> make your morning a little bit easier. Caring of you. <laughs> Great, it's 9.04, so I'm going to kick start. So, well, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Vicky. I'm the head of program and community in the Shortcut. And at the Shortcut, we are the largest talent accelerator in the Nordic based in Helsinki, Finland. And what we do is that we equip and support talent with the uh, skills and connection need to either enter uh, work or to start their own company. And uh, we are nonprofit, so all of our events are free. We have different kind of training for employability, and also we have talks like this for inspiration, and then also entrepreneurship uh, training that basically we teach you everything you need uh, if you want to start your own business. Um, so please follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, just search the shortcut and then you will be able to see us. And we are going to start uh, hosting online breakfast on Room Key in this room um, bi weekly or every week. Uh, we will invite uh, expert from the field to talk about different topics related to entrepreneurship. Uh, so you're very welcome and stay tuned. Uh, well, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker today, uh, Don, uh, CEO of RoomKey. So, Don, if you want to introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, everybody. It's nice to meet you. Thank you all for coming. Um, well, I really appreciate everyone's time this morning. I want to just do a quick run through because I know uh, sometimes we have some echo, echo issues. So if, if there's anyone at your table who has an unmuted mic, if you could just ask them now to, to mute themselves. And if that doesn't work, if you click on their avatar with your finger, it'll bring up a little menu and there's a settings option and you can actually mute the person yourself um, during the event if, if they have some feedback from speaking. But other than that, I really appreciate everybody coming here and, and appearing as a, a well-dressed avatar this early in the morning. Thank you.
Awesome. And a little bit about yourself. Yep. So um, my name is Don, and this is a company I started back in 2018. I was living in San Francisco at the time, and uh, what I was doing out there is I had started a, a venture capital fund, and it was specifically for virtual reality companies. And I had been um, running the fund since 2015, and so it was about 2018 or so when I first started coming up with this idea and thinking through how important it would be if you could create a product that brings back those moments of serendipity that you have at a real event. And when I was running the venture fund in San Francisco, um, you know, every month we would be investing into different virtual reality founders. But in order to meet those founders and to kind of help build my own personal network, I was hosting one meetup every month. And those meetups were anything from like 20 people to 200 people. It depended what was the, the content that we were going for that month. And I would get messages all the time from people saying, hey, I'm really glad that I came to the event because I met so-and-so in the audience. And I started to really realize that you know the power of, of events and communities is meeting other people. And, and that's so important you know, if you think about some of the relationships in your life you probably just happened to sit next to them at an event or, you know, was introduced to them while you were at an event. Um, and those are really powerful relationships. And so in 2018, I stopped doing full-time investing and started trying to figure out a way to build a product that, that replicates the feeling of a real person event, um, but online. And so that has led me on the journey to the product that we're all sitting in today. It's been uh, almost three full years of working really hard to try to make this product happen. And, uh, you know, it's very unique in the sense that this is a virtual reality product. And yet all of us in this room are able to access it from a phone or from a computer. Um, so I can get into a little bit more about my passion for VR, but that's a quick update on the things I've done from the venture fund to starting this company here. Okay. So, so you started in 2018. So obviously it's, it's not, COVID, um, but it came out at a very perfect time because as a, as an event organizer and community manager, I totally agree that it's the, the kind of key uh, for event is that when you go there and you, you meet uh, really interesting people around and then when COVID hit, obviously everything like went to like shit and then i was when i was searching uh for a virtual event like all the event organizer in the world doing then i i found i found room key so so it was it was um like the feeling when you went to events uh that motivates you like is there a problem that kind of kick you to start like some problem that you identify yeah it's a it's a great question so i think um how many, how many people in this room have either started a company to date or are planning on starting one? Give me maybe just the thumbs up with the green emoji if you are, uh, or a thumbs down if not. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, I think that's awesome to see. I, I, I love being in rooms with entrepreneurs. So um, I would say, you know, the most important part of any business is identifying the problem. That's where you build your whole thesis around from the get-go. And so for me, um, you know, the problem that I felt like I had identified was that video solutions didn't quite um, lower the social anxiety for meeting people. And so if you think about, you know, walking into a room full of people you don't know, it's a pretty awkward process. And it takes a lot of guts to just walk up to somebody and to introduce yourself and, and hopefully they're the right person, but if not, more than likely you have to do that 10 times. And um, when I tried to recreate that feeling of networking through video calls back in 2018, you know, I think the thing that was fairly apparent right off the bat is that people felt uh, pretty self-conscious when they were just meeting random people through a video call. Those people were looking into their room. Um, you know, you couldn't do it at seven or nine in the morning because you probably are still in your pajamas as we had noted earlier. And so that problem of, you know, it, it's kind of hard to meet people at all hours of the day online was something that I really focused in on. 
And then because of my background in, in virtual reality, I felt like adding an avatar to represent yourself was a good way where you could still appear uh, and have presence as if you were there, but not need to go through kind of the, um, the dance of cleaning up your apartment and getting dressed and doing all those things that you have to do in order to, to make a real video event. That's true. I have um, met quite few people telling me that they feel a lot more comfortable meeting here in this uh, like virtual reality room, that they, they feel kind of more outgoing and they don't feel shy and awkward because they don't need to worry about all those things. I'm a very outgoing and extrovert and I like to meet people in real life, but I totally understand that that like it feels really comfortable and, and I'm still in my pajama. So <laughs> this is this is really great. Um, well, so you have worked with um, like in the space for a long time and you have invested in many companies yourself. Um, so obviously, I think these are all like big advantage, but what, what would you say has been like maybe like pivotal and like the biggest advantage in your ability to get start, uh, get started and succeed with this business? Like funding, so support yeah. a co-founder or knowledge of the space. Yeah, so I, I think um, every business when you're starting your company has its own unique journey to get going. And it's really uh, dependent on the backgrounds of the founders and kind of like where their network is. So I think, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm going to share my story, but it's, it's, a, it's one that's very unique to me and I'll kind of explain why. And so I think the most important thing when you're listening to my stories is to think about what are your unique advantages that you've built over the last, call it two years, whether that's with your technical know-how or your network or people like Vicky that can help you, you know, meet the right people. It's important to, to really think through, you know, what are your unique advantages? Um, so just to go tell a little bit of the story. So I was, I had started a venture fund, as I had mentioned, and uh, one of the events I was hosting in, it's funny how this all kind of comes together, but one of the events I was hosting in 2017 was for virtual reality founders at a, uh, inside of a boardroom at a venture capital funds office and the venture funds name was general catalyst. And so at that time I hadn't really thought of anything more than the fact that they were willing to pay for dinner. Um, and so I was inviting different people and then they were paying for dinner and that was really all I thought about it, um, at the time. And, and the next day after we had hosted this dinner for all these VR founders, I got a call from the venture fund general catalyst and this is 2017. And basically what they said was, um, hey, we are we really like the people that you brought to the office the other day. We think we think that they're strong founders. Uh, we don't know too much about virtual reality, but we understand that, that that's something that you have a expertise in. So if we were to give you some money, could you invest on our behalf? So basically you have the, the ability to invest into companies from our fund. Um, but without being an employee of the fund. So you can still manage your own your own venture fund. So that was a really unique opportunity for me because I was now able to put in money to different startups from my own fund and then also you know pair that up with money from this larger general catalyst fund. Um, and they're they're somebody who is well known within the Silicon Valley area. You know, they have a strong brand. They invest into Snapchat early. Um, and so they had a, a good amount of money that that I could tap into. Now, uh, I did that for a while and eventually called, called them one day and said, hey, you know, the, the VR industry, I'm not sure, is really unfolding at the pace that we want it to be unfolding. And I don't feel comfortable or it's the responsible thing to do to continue investing your capital nor my time and capital into uh, this industry. However, you know, after spending all this time with, with different founders, I feel like I have a unique thought around a potential business. And I started to kind of explain this idea of turning everyone into avatars, creating these, these beautiful virtual venues, having it, you know, accessible from your phone. And, um, it was, it was, you know, a far away idea at that point when I was describing it, but because of my relationship with them, they were willing to take that first step and, and help fund me. 
And so, you know, that is one of the biggest advantages I had early on getting this company going was because of what I was doing before in my career and the people that I was working with. Um, I was able to, you know, get initial funding for this idea early on. And, and really this, I, you know, this idea and, and the ideas that you're working on, it's very important to kind of pair up your funding resources with the complexity of the early product idea. And so had I not had those connections, then I, we would have needed to build this business in a very different way because we wouldn't have had, you know, a capital injection up front. And so I don't necessarily think that there's one way to build a company. If you don't have the investor resources, that is totally okay um, for two main reasons. Number one, there are people that have those connections that are more than willing to help you as long as you can kind of prove, you know, with the business you have that things are working and starting to happen. And so the money will, the money will come. Um, and the second reason is because most great companies really started from a lack of resources, which forces creativity. And so I think for the companies that are able to bootstrap early on and get through that initial phase, it's much more impressive to an investor to see that someone had the, the guts and the ability to do that um, than to just come up with, with an idea early on. And so I think if, if you, know, you, you need funding resources, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but just try to, to scale back the complexity of the product a bit and start to show some early signs of traction, and then the money will follow that afterwards. Cool. There is a lot of things I want to go dive into, but let's start with uh, the so basically fundings and connections. Um, so, like for example, I mean you you are one of the most active uh, VR AR investors in in the world with like thir more than thirty startups in your portfolio, and so like as a as a seed seed investor. Um, perspective like do you have any tips or tricks to to give to the future founders to be in the room um especially maybe like for example in the nature of vr product it is maybe a little bit more difficult to show like a proper product beginning because it it costs a lot so it's really difficult to kind of like show this room like hey i have this so do you have money like you already need money to build this so what's what's your what's your tips and tricks for the future founders, uh, especially for their products kind of like uh, in this space? Yeah. So within the, the context of virtual, is there anybody in the audience uh, building a, a virtual reality product or something that is, um, you know, fairly com capital intensive early on? Cool. OK, I see one. Uh, that's Vanessa, it looks like. Um, so, you know, a AI, VR, AR. Um, computer vision, uh, and then anything in healthcare and, and many other industries are definitely more capital intensive early on because of the nature of the technology. And so I think um, the thing that really helped me convey the idea early on is that there was another company out there um, who was acquired at that point. They had already been purchased, but they were doing something somewhat similar with avatars. And I saw that there was potential to, to translate what they were doing into events. And so I remember for the first few investor pitches, I would literally walk around with somebody else's product, um, a few different products actually. And I was showing the investors, you know, this is kind of the concept, it's possible. We just need the money to get there. Cool. And um, then like, let's, Talk about a little bit in, in the space. So you mentioned that you were not very comfortable, like, like at kind of at the middle of the process, the how the space is like unfolding the the VR. So like, what are your thoughts on the innovation happening in in the space, like beyond beyond Roomkey and and um, the company? Like, is because there is quite a lot going on now, especially after COVID hit. Yeah, it's, it's um, I, I think virtual reality is starting to, to actually have its moment. And you can see that in the numbers. Um, there's a, a few different metrics out there that you can track in the VR industry that tell you how many headsets are existing. And so if you look at the number of connected Oculuses in the last month, 
Uh, there's about four million of them. Uh, there's about four million and of them. really, the and iPhone had the its, iPhone its had kind its, of tipping its, point its moment when there was about ten million iPhone devices out there. And the majority of those four million uh, Oculus headsets, headsets uh, were sold Oculus within the last year, to the point where now they can't keep the right amount of supply in the supply chain because people are buying them so quickly. So I'd say you know we're about forty percent of the way towards that tipping point, and the tipping point is defined. Is, the point there's is enough is, there's uh, headsets, enough, and, hardware uh, headsets and hardware devices out there to support VR, out there to support that, VR that you can build a really big build company, really consumer big company around that. Consumer company no, around we, that. we were not no, sure we, when we this moment sure would be. Moment and be. so what we did and was so uh, we, did. we kind of built a VR product that works outside of a headset before we focused on a headset. And so this product actually works all the way down to... Um, a lower end Android device or an iPhone seven, like an early model, uh, rather than it, it works in a headset. And so that's something that, you know, we've thought about for a few years now and have been trying to de-risk the moment when we need to wait for. But now that Apple's uh, looks like they're coming out with a headset, now that Facebook's starting to really sell these, uh, and you're also seeing some pretty strong revenue numbers from a lot of the VR products that are in the gaming world, but now you're starting to see uh, a parallel market starting to be built around virtual meetings and virtual events using headsets and avatar technology. And so it feels like this is probably, um, you know, the, the 12 to 18 month period where we hit that 10 million headset mark and things start to really take off for the whole industry. I think they'll have the Bitcoin moment fairly soon. Did you think uh, COVID pushed a bit on this uh, process. Yeah, I think I think being locked down um, and not able to venture out into the real world naturally created this this feeling for for being present with others. Uh, and VR is one of those technologies where if you if you put on a headset and you've really you know had a good experience, you do forget where you are, and you have this this kind of unbelievable amount of presence, even though you're not somewhere physically. And so it's a lot like teleportation in the sense that you can feel like you're going going somewhere else without, um, uh, you're, without needing to do a lot of travel. And so that's, that's how I really think about it. So I think it's the perfect, you know, way to bring people together uh, during the pandemic. And, and you're starting to see that in the headset sales as well, as we had mentioned. Yeah, I've seen more and more of this, um, like, there's also a headset, like, you can just kind of simply place your phone in, and then it turns, it turns the, your phone screen to, to a VR, so that's kind of like a lower bar to start, and, um, like last question in the, about the space, like, the, <clears throat> the future of the VR and then the technology, like, how does it, um, look like to you, for for example, like in recruitment, um, talents, or I don't know, even regulations, because I, I remember last year when, you know, when COVID was like super bad, it's still pretty bad now. Um, I was like imagining, oh my God, like I'm an event organizer. And then, and then if this is going to continue for years, like what, what can we do? What else can we do? And then I was imagining that if I'm, I'm going to throw like a big event and like maybe in the future you will be able to attend the event like in your home and before the event starts like a week ago you will get a box shipped to your home and then with like all these little things you need and then a VR headset depending on you know what what kind of tickets you buy and then when it's event day everybody around the world just like put on the headset and then you're in the in the space, uh, in, in the event. And I think that's something that like, uh, I value per in-person events a lot, but that's some, some kind of future that would be, I would be looking into that. I will be really uh, hopeful to see that. Yeah, I, I to, to really talk about the future, um, and this is, this is probably a decade away, but it was maybe two years ago and I, I went to this building where there was um, a company that was working on full immersion, everything from your body to your mind being immersed into VR. 
And so what they did was they put me into this like skin tight black suit. Um, and it's, it goes across your whole body and it has little markers, uh, within it. And then it also has haptic feedback built in. And I'll explain what that is in a second. And then they strapped me into this treadmill called the Virtuix treadmill. Um, it's basically like a harness and then your feet are, uh, wearing, uh, frictionless socks and you're standing on this, this platform where when you run, the harness keeps you in place, but your feet are moving as if you're actually walking and it, it feels like you're walking, uh, on this platform. And then they put you in a headset to top it all off. And when somebody hits you in the virtual world, in your chest, the, the physical vest that you're wearing has a little vibration of where that they hit you in the physical world. And so projecting that forward, you know, this, this becomes a thing where, um, people are, are quite literally able to live inside of a headset where they, you know, sit in their harness instead of a chair, instead of a desk chair, they sit in their harness, instead of opening up a computer, they put on the headset and then they're able to attend events and not only just, you know, move around the room, like with this product, but actually reach out and shake people's hands and get that haptic feedback back to, um, you know, the hand that they're shaking. That, that I think is kind of the ultimate future of where this is going. And so the way that we see this product is a bridge to help us get there and making it accessible for what's in your pocket today, um, rather than what's in, you know, your, your shopping cart of the future when Apple comes out with their headset. It's starting to sound more and more like Black Mirror. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to prevent against too much of that. I mean, it sounds super cool. And uh, I mean, like, um, I, I remember, I think one or two years back, I met um, actually one one team that came to our like this hackathon. And what they came out with is is like a, also a VR with the headset and to uh, for like releasing stress at work um so like is there i i think there is already like this this technology used in um like more kind of medical or thera therapy uh space for people who don't have the ability to move or could use it to i know re release stress anxiety or, or pain in in hus hospital or in like i don't know therapy center yeah, so um, the first VR company I ever met, this was uh, back in 2015. I don't know if I'm going to be able to remember the name of them, but um, so they would go into hospitals of places that had burned victims. And if you've been in an accident or a fire where you have, you know, a body full of burns, unfortunately, you have to change the band-aids on a daily basis. And... That is a very, very painful process. If you can imagine unwrapping band-aids off of burn marks each day and then rewrapping them. So what the, the company was doing is they would put the, um, the burn victims, you know, kids and adults into a headset and it was a high quality headset. So it, it really created, you know, the feeling of being there. And then they would put them into a, uh, essentially like an, uh, a world full of snow. And then the person in the headset would play a little game where you go around and I don't remember what you were doing, something with penguins, uh, you know, the penguins are running around and just simply by being able to move the attention of the burn victim to a, a world that's cold, that appears colder, um, and distracts the person by giving them a game to do while their, their doctor is taking off their bandages they were able to reduce, reduce the amount of opioids that they were giving these patients by about 30%. And so, you know, that's just one of the millions of use cases for where VR can help us. It's also great for uh, exposure therapy. So another company I saw back at that time period for arachnophobia, people that were afraid of spiders, they would put you into a virtual headset and then they would have one spider come out at a time and basically expose you to your fears um, until you at some point became numb to it and started to, to get over it. And that's something that they've also used for victims of PTSD after coming back from war. 
um, and a few different types of, of uh, you know, things that, that VR can solve. So it's definitely going to make a big impact in the medical field. And it's something that we've already seen happening. But medical is not consumer. And, you know, you're not going to be reading about um, the same level of kind of consumer adoption of a, of a medical app. As a, as a consumer social app. And so, um, you know, VR definitely is, is existing and making money in those enterprise solutions, but we're more excited about when that crosses over to the consumer because then it becomes, you know, kind of an acceptable thing to do in the hospital, at work, or by yourself when you're hanging out of your house. That's, that's really great news and like very beautiful idea. Um, we are going to approach the Q&A session soon, so I'm going to wrap this up with the um, question about, like, do you have advice that you would like to share with people thinking about starting a company uh, in this in the VR space or even just um, like thinking of starting a company? Um, as a, as a pe person who have walked the path, um, Please share some of your wisdom with us. Yeah, I think um, the company, the, the journey of building a company is obviously very hard and it's, it's unique to everybody. <clears throat> but the, the common trait across any successful company, and I think you'll see this in pretty much every uh, you know, startup that's been able to succeed, is that they have a great team. That's really important. Um, that is probably 101 for being able to get going because if you have a really good idea and it's a big idea, it's not going to be possible to do alone. Um, and it's not going to be possible to do for, you know, a cheap budget either. And so, you know, I think again, that, that is probably the most important thing you can have is being able to, to assemble the right group of people and then being able to, whatever scale of funding you have match the product with that as you build um that that is you know critically important so john my co-founder i see is is in the audience john if you want to give us a thumbs up if you're listening um you know meeting him in 2018 really the inception point of the company because until I met him, it was just an idea in my head. I didn't even know if it was something that was possible to build. Um, and then, you know, he was able to take what was an idea and turn it into the functioning product. So that is something you can't do alone. So I think, you know, having the right co-founder and the right team is really important. Uh, people that understand what you're trying to do from a mission standpoint, but also people that, uh, you know, have clearly shown uh, interest in the space even before. I think one of my, my favorite ideas or stories to tell um, from John and I meeting early on was the first time we sat down in person, he showed me a video of him on stage uh, doing a talk about virtual reality and, and where the industry was going. And he was talking about Zoom VR and essentially, you know, what does it look like when the next kind of Zoom is created in VR? And he told me, you know, whether I'm with you or not, this is a product that I want to build. And so I think, you know, being able to really uh, get a group of people together walking in the same direction is important. And so, you know, taking the, the time to build the team early on is going to ultimately lead to the longest uh, runway there. So that would be the, the number one bit of advice is, is get a really strong team. Um, and then from there, you can start to work on all the problems that come with the startup. But without the team, you know, then that common point that all companies have, then probably nothing's impossible or nothing is possible um, without that early on. I love this. You know what? Our next online breakfast topic is how to find your right co-founder. So yeah. this is super smooth uh, that, yeah. So. You heard, you heard the, the man. We didn't even um, plan and, that. <laughs> no, I love it. I was like, oh, so smooth. I'm going to sell the next <laughs> one. Yeah, but our, our next online breakfast, we are going to talk about finding your right co-founder. And I, I agree that, I mean, also really 
jobs that uh, start up with, uh, you know, balanced co-founder team, raise more money, and it's uh, like they grow faster, they reach the scaling stage uh, faster than solo entrepreneurs. And um, if some people in the audience are uh, starting their own business, I think I think everybody all feels the loneliness and you feel alone when you're like, you know, trying to do the heavy lifting, especially from the beginning. So um, this is great. And if you're interested, please come join us next week. Um, I'm going to open the floor for um, Q&A. So if you have questions for Don, you can raise your hand if you check on the right hand side. Yeah, um, of the, and I will run over there and give you my. We, we can invite them up on stage too if you want to do that. Okay, cool. I will invite on stage. Yeah, thank you for the talk. It was uh, really interesting and insightful. So I was also a bit interested to know how do you delineate yourself as the room key app from uh, other similar softwares or applications such as Mozilla Hubs, which also provides a similar type of uh, environment for interaction. So. Yeah, great, great question. Um, so Mozilla Hubs, <clears throat> excuse me, Mozilla Hubs for everyone's reference is a web VR uh, version of how you can bring people together and it's all web-based and then there's also a few uh, oops I clicked off stage there's another uh, few products out there one from Facebook and one from Microsoft um, that's a similar product with avatars the way that we see it is that the the industry is so early on right now that we're happy with anyone starting to succeed um, because that's going to then set off kind of that tidal wave moment. So, for example, you know, in in uh, as a Bitcoin company in 2017, before the first wave of hype, you didn't really care who you know started to take off because as long as one person was was running and off to the races, then the rest of the industry was growing with it. And so, you know, we really want to see Moha, Mozilla hubs. We really want to see Microsoft's products succeed. We want you know all these these different companies to start to succeed because that then puts avatars into the press, and then we feel that our product uh, you know is really well built and is easy to use. And so naturally, as more people understand avatars and start to look for solutions, we think we'll be one of the hubs that they'll stop at. Um, and then there's some technical dis differences, like for example, Mozilla Hubs is limited in the amount of people in the room. I think it's like 12 people. Um, they're limited in the avatar styling uh, and clothing options that you can have because it's hard to run this on the web and things like that. But I think really what it comes down to is we want to see everyone succeed because then we can be a part of that group of successful people. Great. Thanks. Do we have more questions from the audience? You can simply click raise your hand and I will invite you on the stage. Anything works. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna... Hello. Hello. Hello, I'm Vicky. I don't. I... Hello, hello. I think you're mute. I think you're mute. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Yeah, okay. now we can. Okay, thanks. So, uh, yeah, nice to meet you virtually again. Uh, my question is, uh, do you see, uh, I mean, not everybody has VR sets, right? So do you see that as a, uh, as something which stops, uh, the popularity of all these kinds of new VR uh, specific startups or 
how, how do you see it go uh, happening in the future? Is everybody buying VR headsets uh, or uh, or some other new technology which What what kind of a device what, are you what on? What kind of a device are you on? Uh, I am on an iPhone. Okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Um, uh, if you could just mute yourself, sorry. Yeah, if you could otherwise, just mute we'll yourself, have an sorry. echo. Otherwise, we'll have an echo. Okay. So uh, on the iPhone, if you uh, turn your phone sideways, you'll get a wider view into the room, and just doing that you know, adding an extra inch to the screen, it really helps you feel more immersed <clears throat> into the virtual world. And so the way that we think about, um, you know, the answer to your question around, will people buy headsets and at what pace is that we've tried to de-risk that as much as possible. So you're able to attend this virtual reality environment from your iPhone right now. Um, and even though you only have a few inches of screen space, you can feel like you're somewhat immersed within the world. So that for us is the most important thing to focus on is uh, kind of bringing consumers along that bridge towards wanting to be an avatar in a virtual world and first starting with an iPhone and an Android device and then moving into a headset down the line once there's enough sales of headsets out there. Thank you. So. Great, thanks. And I saw another hand uh, was it Julia or Arnold? Okay, I'm gonna get Arnold on stage. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for the example done about the burns and bandages where you where VR has a huge impact. So your current application is around meetings and seminars and everything around that. Are you, from your strategy point of view, planning to do it in other areas like education or I'm thinking about behavior change as, as you, you talked about the burns, if you, you can get people to, well, their behavior. I think um, education is definitely something that's of interest. We have recently uh, been in talks with a university in the United States that is interested to white label the app. And so basically they'll have their own app for their university where students can see what's happening on the virtual campus. They can attend classes um, and they can you know, do a lot of the stuff they do on a real campus, but on the virtual campus. That's something that is definitely of interest for us. Um, but what we're trying to do is focus in on the idea of, of community events where people benefit from networking and meeting each other at the events. And so our number one focus right now is uh, people that run meetup groups and strong communities around the world. Um, so we're starting there, but there's definitely the opportunity to move into the education space down the line. And we do have some schools that are already using our product for their, their students. Um, for example, one of them is called the Think Global School. And traditionally, they would take students around the world to four different countries throughout a year of high school. They obviously can't do that right now. And so rather than traveling, um, they're using our product to do their classes and then also their school-wide announcements. So they'll get 40 kids into an auditorium room, something very similar to this venue. They'll have the teacher, uh, actually the principal up on stage, and he'll make announcements to the students. And then the students can move between the tables and talk to each other afterwards. And so that's a really cool way that we're starting to see this product be used um, and where we can still provide it to people for free. And that's something that's important to us is you know growing the user numbers. OK, that's cool. Thank you. Um, but also around behavior change, because I think it's also the way in which people communicate. Maybe in this VR reality, people are more easy, more open-minded, more willing to to have 
perhaps even honest conversations which are a bit confronting in real life whereas now in in this virtual reality um you uh, yeah you can be more open you have experience with that yeah the, the principal of that school um messaged me the other month and said it's noticeable that the students who are typically introverted are talking a lot more as a virtual avatar and I thought that was really interesting because they know who are the students that are talkative and answer questions and they know who are the students that, you know, remain more quiet. Um, and so they've been able to see a difference there just in using the product that that I think was really interesting. And then, you know, if, if anyone in the room wants to host any sort of events where it's a conversation based um, event where it's a you know a hard subject to talk about, I think that's a really great use of our product as well because it does allow you to be a little bit more honest without feeling like you're um, you know, revealing too much of, of the personal side of things. And so that's really healthy, I think, to have these conversations as an avatar. As silly as it might sound, uh, you know, there's definitely an advantage to uh, having an avatar rather than a video when it comes to, to honest conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. We are reaching the end of the event. Um, well, thank you very much, Don, for for this. And I'm pretty happy that we kickstart the online breakfast. Oh, there is another question. OK, I'm going to get the last question on stage. And um, well, we're going to leave the room open later on. And uh, I think me and Don might stick around a little bit longer. We will travel around the table so you can talk with with uh, us but okay Diana I will I invited you on stage now hi <laughs> okay this is hello. a different view hello uh, I accidentally actually press the bottom raise your hand but anyway I have a question um, uh, well, I have an experience. I, I did an internship with a VR, an AR, AR um, startup. Uh, they were at the very early stage um, developing, you know, their product. Uh, so uh, they were struggling at was to find, you know, the right uh, niche or the right partners. Um, and of course, you know, proving the fa uh, the funder, like yeah, pe the the people that were like funding that project, um, that the, the the project would be successful. You know, especially if you uh, don't know who your customer or potential customers would be. So, what type of advice you would give someone that is at the very early stage um, area? Let's let's say developing their VR project. What was the company? Uh, it's a Swedish VR company. Uh, it's called Oliver's. They are great, doing great uh, progress right now. But uh, yeah, that's, I think that's something that I noticed at the very early stage. Cool. It's called um, Oliver's. I don't know if you know. Oliver, I'll, I'll write that one down. Uh, I love VR. I'm sure that is how they spelled it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think with any new technology, it's very hard to find the right adoption area early on. Um, this is something that, that, you know, we've been working on for years now. And I think there's probably two uh two things that need to collide when you're looking for the right fit the the number one thing is having uh the ability to really observe what's happening and try to understand both within your own product but then the world in general trying to understand you know what what consumers are interested in using and how they're using it and looking for um, you know, the right trends and the right bits of data to, to support your ideas. So for example, um, we, 
really went through a, a about a year's period where we were jumping back and forth between this being a, a product for events or a product for meetings. And those are, you know, similar products, but they're, they're actually quite different in the messaging and in the acquisition strategy. And so, um, you know, that, that required us to really take in a lot of, of feedback and then let that drive some of the decisions around the product. And then the second, and I'll connect these variables, the second variable that's important is having strong vision and then being able to hold on to that vision, which is somewhat counterintuitive to the first point. So for example, when we first came out with this, this idea um, in 2018, it was, it was basically uh, Clubhouse, but for VR, that was like the original inception of the idea was this, this concept that anyone can have public rooms you can bring people into those rooms. They're great for networking. And that was something that if you look at, you know, the early, the first pitch deck, really that was what we were trying to build. Um, but then over the course of the next 18 months, you know, as, as the product unfolds and develops, there's certain limitations that you have to work with. One of the, the limitations for us was the uh, number of attendees that could be fit into a room. And so when COVID started happening, there were event companies that were, you know, uh, having thousands of people at their events. And that was what people were asking for. The customers were asking for, you know, really large scale events. Um, but we were capped at about 40 people, I believe so, like 40 avatars in the room. And so that kind of made us, and really made me think more towards, okay, if that's one of our, our limitations and the, the users of, a, of events want larger numbers, then maybe we have to build a product that is for meetings because meetings naturally have a smaller amount of people that are there. And so, you know, we would kind of jump between this original vision of trying to build the clubhouse of VR, but also at the same time, you know, building a, a meetings product. Um, and that process was um, was healthy, but at the same time, I think unhealthy, healthy, because time, I think unhealthy what was more important, in my opinion, was sticking with one vision and really, you know, delivering on that vision and getting it going. And so I think, you know, we're probably a good example of a company that has gone back and forth and back and forth to go after. And therefore, you know, we're... We, you know, we have taken a lot of time to really time to commit really to that niche. To that now niche. we're at a point now where you know we know what we're you know, doing. We're, we're doing. building a product for meetup organizing and communities, organizing to, come communities to come together and, and in a very and unique and way. Very unique but way. It, it did take but us a long time to really be able to you know put that down on paper and not have the feeling of looking backwards. So. So, you know, I think probably yeah, the most important most thing, important as much as it, it much matters to get, it the matters feedback, to get the feedback, you really need to have really a clear have vision in your own head of what you want to build and what you know is and working and the thesis, thesis that, you're that you're pursuing, and then, and then sticking, to sticking to that as much as possible, as much as possible um, to get it over the finish line. That sounds great. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you very much for your answer. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Well, um, well, thanks, um, a thanks, thanks a lot again, everybody, for joining, again, everybody and for thanks Don for joining us. Um, for I'm joining gonna us. wrap I'm up gonna here, wrap and uh, uh, Don, are you gonna uh, stick Don around a little bit if there's still yeah, people? Yeah, I'll come hop in the little table. Say hi to people. Okay, cool. Well, uh, okay, hunt cool. him down. Uh, uh, try to find where he is. Uh, and um, now the room is, and, is um, free for everybody. Is uh, you can everybody. feel free to uh, jump around the table and talk to each other and get some connection. And hopefully we will see you again on our next online breakfast. Awesome. And any, anyone at the green table, if you just put your finger and mouse on the screen and click other tables, you'll be able to teleport around. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop into the light blue table up front right now.